Welcome to Northwest Sessions. I'm Madeline Mosbauer. Here with me today are three musicians from Northwest Missouri State University. Do you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourselves? Yes, ma'am. I am Ryan Waldkamp, saxophonist, just out here chilling, making some music. Uh, I am Nick Foster, also a saxophonist. And I'm David Curtis. Uh, I'm a drummer here at Northwest. Um, so have you guys played together before? Yeah, no. We uh, When Craig told me about this, I got these guys together a few days ago to come and practice i was like yeah let's just let's just do it let's just jam on sessions yeah and uh we're all in some fashion and an ensemble at the fine arts department like we're all in the top jazz ensemble um all of us have been in wind symphony either currently or at some point so you know we've been in a good variety of ensembles together and played a lot of different type of music um and then what is your favorite type of music to play so mine personally uh, is rock. I'm a rock drummer. Um, I got into jazz kind of just off a whim um, in high school, and uh, ever since I've just been playing any opportunity I can. Um, you know, I'm I'm kind of into a lot of type of music. Uh, jazz is obviously my uh, my main music. I really love jazz, um, but I I also like uh, R and B, hip hop, um, lo-fi. Um, all, all those genres that can in some way or fashion be associated with jazz. Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at too. But definitely if I'm if I'm picking up my sax, I'm just trying to trying to play some jazz, trying to play something some feel good something that feels good. It just feels good to play. Um and so why did you guys choose the instruments you play? Uh, the saxophone's <laughs> cool. Yeah, I know the saxophone <laughs> it's a it's a great instrument. It's a 
It's a very expressive kind of emotional instrument. It sounds a lot like the. It's like doesn't it like sound the most like the human voice? Yeah, there's uh there's been like an actual scientific study done that you know, uh, I don't know all the research that went behind it, but it basically says that the saxophone is the closest instrument that resembles the human voice. So that's interesting. Yeah, and I got into drums. Um, I didn't choose it. Uh, when I was like two, my parents noticed I would like hit carrots or sticks or whatever on pans. <laughs> so they just <laughs> bought me a drum set, and I've kind of been there since. So, uh, um, so what's it kind of like balancing everything? Because I know it takes a lot of time to practice and play. Exhausting. Very yeah. exhausting. It's uh, uh, On average, I practice around three hours a day now and I have to balance that on top of you know classes and uh, uh, homework and my social life and just uh, you know but it's all worth it in the end you know I'm, I'm a lot better at my instrument at the end of the day than I was uh, the previous day and um, yeah it's yeah no Nick goes hard he he takes it like way more seriously than I d like you you definitely inspire me though because, like, I would not practice as much if I didn't know that you were out here just, like, practicing three hours a day and just really, like, pushing yourself. Because you can, like, I can hear you getting better. And, like, that's something I don't always feel. Yeah, so it's, absolutely. like, it's respectable. So what makes it, like, worth it to you guys of wanting to play for so long? Um, For me, I, th I feel that, like, as I've gotten better and continue to practice and play, um, more opportunities present themselves. Um, so, like, now I can perform in front of more people and just kind of, you know, share my craft with, with more people. I'm just having fun. I just like, to, just like to play my sax, like, get together, jam, just have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> That's my thing. And there's, a, there's always something to improve at, you know, no matter how good you get. And even, you know, the best musicians in the world will tell you, I'm, I'm not – you know, at my best potential yeah, that I could be right no now. Joke. There's always something that I could work on, you know, that, you know, I kind of suck at or, you know, just I could adapt to like a newer style of music that's becoming more prominent. And, uh, you yeah, know, that's. All right. We'll be right back with some more great music. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, so what kind of experience do you guys have on other instruments? Um, I, I have quite a bit of experience. Uh, like I said before as well, um, I played guitar uh, at the age of five, and I basically went through seventh grade. Um, really wish I had stuck with it. I kind of, you know, I still have my old guitars, and every once in a while I'll pick them up, and, you know, I could relearn certain, like, patterns or chords or whatever. And... Uh, but I kind of gave it up around the time I started saxophone. Um, you know, I, I also played clarinet in high school. Um, uh, he's a pretty good clarinet player. Thanks. Uh, you know, uh, I play a little bit of flute as well. And uh, as a music major, especially music education, uh, I'm required to take these methods courses for different, like, families of instruments, like woodwind, brass, percussion. And so I, I can say that I'm very adequate on almost every instrument at least uh, at least every common instrument um but yeah saxophone clarinet flute uh sitar i wish i wish i could play sitar uh, but oh i also uh i play a little bit of piano as well just self-trained um but nothing too special i don't want to rant too much about it because i'm not that great at it but uh uh you know, I, I just really love the sound of the piano, and so, you know, every once in a while I'll find myself in the practice room for, you know, two hours just, you know, going on and off on the keyboard. So. Yeah, no, I'm the same way. I, I love the saxophone, but uh, keys and the piano, that'll always probably be my favorite instrument. I think there's just a lot more you can do with it, and I, I'm the same way. I got nothing to preach about the piano because I'm, I'm not good at it, but I, I love to, like, just try to, you know, just play it as noise, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm pretty vanilla compared to these two <laughs> over here. Uh, I'm a drummer, um, you know, born that way. Um, but I play in the other ensembles here at Northwest, so I'm pretty well versed in, like, all percussion, so timpani and marimba and other orchestral music. Um, I'm pretty proficient at, I guess you could say, as well. Um, so is there anybody that specifically influenced you guys to get into this? Oh. Uh, okay, so if we're talking, like, what influenced me to get into the saxophone, it was probably just, like, you know, uh, my grandpa loved jazz and wanted to make him proud, I guess. So I was like, okay, I'll play the saxophone. And then from there, when I started finding musicians, like musicians that inspire me, definitely uh, like John Coltrane for any saxophonist. That's like the gold standard. And uh, I'm into kind of more avant-garde experimental music. So like freeform jazz, like big into tenor players like Farrah Sanders, Albert Ayler, Archie Shep. And uh, I don't know, th th those, those are just people. Though That's like where I try to get my like sound and ideas from and i also love soul jazz musicians so and soul music in general like really that's 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 what i try to so i try to strive for but i try to kind of the sound i try to kind of fit into um yeah uh i'm inspired by a lot of great music um uh, you know i i kind of want my saxophone sound to be very uh how do I word this? Uh, I wanted to resemble, you know, a lot of great like R and B singers, and uh, uh, certain later period saxophone players like from the '80s and '90s that I like. Um, like there was a saxophone player uh, with Miles Davis named Kenny Garrett, who is not Kenny G. <laughs> do not get that mixed up, please. Um, take that seriously. <laughs> I do take that very seriously. Uh, but uh, he he's got a great great sound. Um, you know, sounds very modern, and a lot of uh, people who play saxophone on uh, like modern hip hop albums and stuff are inspired by him and his sound. And uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of modern saxophone players like Kamasi Washington, who uh, played on some of Kendrick Lamar's albums, um, he's very good. We actually went to yeah, see him in November him. Uh, live. Great, oh, amazing God. concert. Just, yes, it, it, it was something else. It was a religious experience. But, um, <laughs> it was it was spirit. It was spiritual jazz. That's what that's what it was. Yeah, it was spiritual but jazz. um, but yeah, um, when I started out playing saxophone, actually, I didn't take it that seriously, and my parents, you know, would force me to practice, and I didn't like it. Um, but yeah, it was just really when I started listening to uh, actual, you know, good music, and uh, you know, I started trying to emulate those sounds that I was hearing and that's what influenced me yeah for me uh, I actually went to a church close nearby in St. Joe Word of Life Church as a child 
and uh, the drummer there, um, for some reason, like made a huge impact on me. Um, and I kind of he was he's like seven years older than me, so we kind of grew up together. And uh, he's gone on to be like super successful. His name is Corey Myers. Um, and he was always just a huge inspiration to me just because he looked super cool up there. <laughs> <laughs> he looked sick. <laughs> church does, like, a lot of times, like, the church, they do a better job of, like, teaching people music than the schools. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of great agree. church-trained musicians. Do you have personal experience with that? Like, why do you believe that? Uh, just people I've met. I uh, I went to church as a kid, but I we didn't really have a band or nothing, just an old lady that played piano. And that's fine too. I guess still, that's still music. A lot of great music and great musicians have always and will always probably come from from churches, any de- not any denomination. Yeah, it's really just uh, those musicians who are really involved with the gospel genre. You know, especially in the churches. You know, they uh, a lot of churches have like live bands, and uh, you know, they have an entire choir of R and B. Uh, type singers yeah, and soul and soul singers. It, it, re- it really teaches you like yeah. the spiritual side of music. It does, and, and you know, um, no, that's actually a really good point. Um, it's a very spiritual form of music, and you know, people feel more involved, and they feel like they can relate music to something higher than themselves, which you can do if you're not religious too. But yeah, you no, know, I that it, de- it definitely helps. Yeah, definitely. no, it's a, I, I think I think all. I don't want to get too deep, but like all, all music's a little is a little religious. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Thanks for tuning in to Northwest Sessions here on KNWT Channel 8. That's all the time we have for tonight, but before we go, we'll kick it off with some more jazz.